All right, last night the House voted to censure Michigan Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, providing a formal rebuke of her extreme anti Semitic rhetoric. 22 Democrats actually joined the majority in voting to censure Tlaib, who remains unapologetic for her use of the chant from river to the sea, which has long been an anti Semitic rallying cry employed by Hamas. Join me now to discuss this and much more. Congressman Tim Burchett, he serves on the House Oversight and Accountability Committee and the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He represents the 2nd Congressional District of Tennessee. Congressman, welcome back to the program. Good to see you. Great being back with you. Thank you. So you voted in favor of the of censuring uh, Congresswoman Tlaib. Tell us why. Well, her language, you know, we, we all have a First Amendment, but you still, you know, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater, um, you know, and it has consequences. What she says, we're United States congressmen or women, whichever the case may be. And what we say is we need to be held accountable. And that government, she needs to be held accountable. This is just going on and on and on. And she she does the usual thing. She says she's sorry. This time she never even says she was sorry. But um, this anti-Semitic behavior to me is is offensive and it's repulsive. And um and it needs to stop. And, and you know, the Democrat leadership needs to say this is enough is enough. And I, it's, it's disgusting to me. Um, it ought to be very disgusting to Jewish folks that are Americans and people around the world that look at America as that shining city on a hill. It's troubling that you would have a member of Congress, and I agree with you, we have a First Amendment right. I served in our nation's military to protect that right. I've served as a police officer, and I know you've served as a public servant to do the same. But there are red lines. Uh, there are responsibilities that come with leadership. And this is actually, she's speaking out in support of a terrorist group. So I'm, I'm grateful that the Congress has drawn a line and said, hey, you're, you've crossed the line. Won't be tolerated. No, and, and it won't be. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the, the guts to kick her out. But the, um, you know, the truth is this 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 anti-Semitic behavior and and um, terrorist favoring groups have infiltrated our government. You know, we have a State Department. It was I found out in and in, uh, in, through testimony and some detective work by some folks in my office that our own State Department, Tony, is actually funding some of these terrorist organizations and they right. they claim they didn't know. And you know, Dad Government, if they just Googled the organizations that they were sending money to, um, that it you know, and if and if I can find it, I'm no detective, I'm no forensic accountant, but um but I swear if we can't do better than that, when we've got it, you know, in our college campuses, what's going on there in our public institutions, Harvard and Yale, I don't, you know, whether they're, they're private institutions, but you know, in the University of Tennessee, when I get reports of anti-Semitic behavior there or, or, or other places, to me, um, you know, every time you write a check to one of these colleges or universities, folks ought to, ought to put a string attached right. to it. And when they pull this garbage, they ought to Stop sending them the money. You're absolutely right. And and the government should pull its money as well. I, I want to switch topic here. topics. Earlier this week, photographs containing excerpts from the Nashville Covenant School shooters' writings were leaked and later verified as authentic. Uh, it, you've been calling for this manifesto to be released. It is still not been released. Why? That's a great question. Um, it's obvious to me that you know, when it's um, when it fits the narrative, then it's going to be released in a hurry. But when it when it calls into question of of what's going on with and, and these folks that are influencing these kids and who's doing it and what they're being influenced for, um, it seems to me that there's there's always a big stall factor. And, you know, it's obvious attempt to get our firearms. And it's horrible, horrible what that that girl did. She was a girl. She was, you know, whatever they say, transitioning into a boy or something that shows she had a mental illness there, obviously. Um, but, you know, if you, you just look at what happened October 7th in Israel, you don't know why you need those guns with an open border and these folks coming in. It's, um, you know, it, it is a dangerous situation in this world and we need to be very cautious of it. And America is just, we're going to get caught again in another tragic incident, I'm afraid, just because of the 
I mean, there are millions of people, Tony, that have come over our border, and there is no way in this world we know. And when we find them on the terrorist watch list, the left always jumps up and says, well, see, it's working. We caught them, you know. And if you've ever been down there, as I have, there's no way in the right. world you can keep track of all those people. Well, and we know and, uh, that, uh, you know, over a million and a half have evaded capture. Others have been caught and released, led into the country. And, and you're right. There's this effort to take away our ability to protect ourselves. But what's interesting, in, in, and again, we've not seen all of the manifesto. We've just seen a couple no. of screenshots, the city now investigating this to see how it was released. But it would suggest that there was some type of... Uh, indoctrination that took place. I mean, there's so much of the leftist ideology revealed in the manifesto that was released. Is is that part of the reason it wasn't released? Is because it exposes the poisoning that the left has been doing to the minds of American children? Well, I'd have to think that when law enforcement says they're still investigating it, how much longer do they need to investigate it? They know uh, they know what, who, who she was, what she did, when she did it. They've got most of it on film. And uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, there's been an indoctrination of this this young lady, and and she was obviously not mentally well. And that's um, that's who they usually see. Well, and 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 like it's that. not like this would jeopardize a court case because uh, she was uh, neutralized by police officers on the scene. So uh, it's it's inexplicable why. They have not released this information so the public would know what is behind this. And again, I know that you've been calling for that. Hadn't happened yet. Maybe it will yeah. in the days ahead. I'm, I'm so frustrated with that. Um, obviously, being, being from Tennessee, it's middle Tennessee. It's a little different area than where I grew up, but it's still it's still Tennessee. And and to me, it's, it's just it's just preposterous. There is no other reason that I can come up with why they don't release the entire manifesto. And, and just let it go. Because they sure as heck, when it fits their narrative, that right. gum, they get the thing out, it's out overnight. They, right. it, it burns up the Xerox machine. They're making so many copies of it. And of course, this incident, and it's, it's pretty clear in the media, in Nashville and around the state, they're already making excuses of, oh, this is, you could just pick and choose who she was. She was mad at everybody. Well, it was pretty specific. And there's some, there's some language in there that you just right. don't just come up with. Right. And, um, and I, I think that the public needs to see that. All right, Congressman Burgett, good to see you. Thanks so much for taking time to join us today. Always a pleasure, even under these circumstances. And thank you all for keeping putting out the truth.